Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I want to talk to you about two things in this video. The first one is we're seeing some good signs from Gaza. Firstly, Israel had this massive withdrawal. Obviously, there's still genocide is still going on. It's not like it's not. But there are things that are improving, particularly after the Israeli mass withdrawal of Division 98, which is the main fighting division in Gaza. Today, we had many people in Gaza reporting that there is an option for them to go back to the northern part of Gaza. Firstly, it was rumors circulating amongst people that Israeli authorities are now allowing all of them who fled the north to the south to go back to their homes. However, the reports were mixed. So some people were saying it was only women, children, and elderly. And any men, they have to be over 40. Other reports said men over 35 can go. However, the reports were there. The people were going up in masses to the northern part of Gaza, including males under 35. So between the ages of 17 to 35, without significant Israeli interference. Now, when I say without significant Israeli interference, that means there are a couple of bombs landed. <laughs> That's what it means. But we didn't get reports of casualties, which means there's a safe passage. Now, why is this happening? Clearly, there have been a couple of things that we've been speaking about when it comes to Biden putting pressure on Netanyahu, now stating that he doesn't want to participate in any potential Israeli retaliation against Iran. Then, obviously, the prerequisites for the negotiations and that many things happen behind the scenes that are not spoken about in public to avoid repercussions in public opinion. For example, when we had the temporary ceasefire previously between Israel and Hamas, a lot was happening before we reached the temporary ceasefire. Firstly, Israel withdrew a significant number of its forces, uh, forces from North uh, Gaza. They also again started to allow people to go to the north. More aid started to go in, although they were banning everything at the time, if you recall. And aid started to flow slowly but surely to North Gaza. Fighting de-escalated. These are primarily requests from the Palestinian side for Israel to show some sort of seriousness when it comes to uh, going and reaching a deal and moving ahead with a potential prisoner swap. That's most likely what's happening. Why are they not saying it? To avoid repercussions. Benjamin Netanyahu particularly, obviously it would be an achievement to the Palestinians as well, but they won't say it. However, they're seeing it, which is more important. So it's evident. It's not like it's very critical for them. However, it's more critical from Israel's side. Why? Because Benjamin Netanyahu, his image is already tarnished. It's uh, on the floor, his image in Israel. Most of the population want him out. Many people blame him for the 7th of October. Many people blame him for the casualties of Israel. And many people, even from the war cabinet and from the negotiating delegation, senior figures, blame him for the deaths of the kidnapped Israelis who are in Gaza because they reported many times that they almost achieved the deal, but they didn't because of Netanyahu's stubbornness. So this is a good sign, especially seeing as many of these people who shared some of their uh, videos and images of them going back to the north, they also showed significant amounts of food, something so basic, but it's so <laughs> rare and so pleasing to see, you know, that people are getting food with their families, which is great. And very significant numbers indeed going up to the north of Gaza. This was the first thing that I want to talk to you about. The second thing is a recent statement from Gadi Eisenkot. All of what we spoke about could also be them climbing down the ladder, really. 
the withdrawal, the saying that we're still going to attack Rafah, but most of their fighting forces outside, still targeting here and there, aid going in now, people going in the north. These are very important steps, by the way. These were red lights for Israel, but because of the Palestinian persistence and strength of the resistance and the defeat and humiliation of Israel and its uh, genocidal terrorist army, this is what's happening. Gadi Eisenkot, he is a senior member of the war cabinet leading this genocide. He lost two of his... Uh, close uh, family members, by the way. One of them is his son, one is his nephew. They were uh, killed. One of them was killed in an ambush in a tunnel and the other one another attack. However, he came up with this uh, statement. Now, apparently the war hasn't ended. You didn't tell the Israeli public or the world that the war has ended. But he's saying that the army was active in Gaza for six month, months and did not release the 133 prisoners that are remaining there. The military was active for six months and did not release 133 prisoners, which is signaling really that he's admitting failure. I mean, how else can you try? Why would you say that statement? We've been active there for six months and we didn't get the kidnapped people. You're admitting that you're failing. In other words, you're not saying we're a failure, we're defeated, we're humiliated. You're not revealing, it. of course not. But you are admitting defeat by saying you, you haven't released the prisoners. Why does that matter? Because you haven't declared that you stopped the war yet. Yet you're saying that you're failing and you couldn't release your prisoners. Why are you saying it? That's most likely to prepare the Israeli public opinion for a bigger declaration of ending the war. Now, we already have some people in Israel calling it an activity in Gaza, the battle engagement in Gaza, anything but a war. Senior figures in the Israeli military and intelligence agencies and establishments are saying that we're not engaged in a war anymore, we're engaged in battles, really. So this could potentially be another step towards Israel declaring the end of the war. However, you cannot rely on that. And Netanyahu has done so many things that are unexpected and unreasonable that damaged Israel so severely that you cannot certainly expect what's going to happen. However, these steps signal that there might be something going on in the background, potentially to reach a full ceasefire sometime soon, but, uh, at least with Hamas' submission of their response to the negotiations and with the U.S. administration actually using the leverage that they threatened to use against Israel. This was the main thing that I want to talk to you about the two things really, and I will see you soon in the next video. Take care.